All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you well know, we've documented it and talked about it on this show with people much more qualified to do so than I about uh, what's happening to our military from rules of engagement. We've talked to Navy SEALs. We've talked to, uh, you know, retired uh, 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 military uh, lifetime servicemen and, and women, and, and it's just uh, it, it's very frustrating. It's, it's, it's very frightening, along with everything else that's frightening, um, and, and that so much is <clears throat> going on at the same time, it makes it hard to concentrate. If there was no Obamacare fiasco and no Benghazi scandal and no IRS scandal and no executive orders being issued every day by the president, then we could concentrate and say, oh, look what's happening to the military. Look how it's being feminized. Look how it's being decimated. Look how morale is sinking. Look at the funny hats he wants the Marines to wear. Look how he wants to take the uh, slogan off of the, the, uh, the Navy SEALs. Uh, look, look, at, look at the generals being purged. But we, our heads are spinning from everything else. But I think it's very important, and we, I'm proud we do this here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Um, we take a look at this, and we're not going to let it just fly totally under the radar. And joining us now is someone who, is, as I said, is much more qualified than I uh, will ever be to talk about this. He is a retired Army Major General Patrick Brady, who uh, is a Medal of Honor recipient. It is an honor to have you, General. Thank you. Dave, it's good to be with you. All right. Well, um, I, let, let's talk about uh, this, and, and, and let's talk about what you and, and, and others, but you speak for yourself, believe is going on here uh, with uh, President Obama and, uh, and, and, and the purging, as it's being referred to by people like yourself, uh, of the military. Well, I, I never myself personally ever used the word purge. I would say a more appropriate term is, is he's emasculating the military. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> and he's, he's feminizing the military, and I think he does it. Now, we could go down the list of things that are affecting. It's more important to focus on the readiness and what this man has done to the readiness of the military rather than the, the firing of a general. And this started back with Peter Pace, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, when he spoke out about homosexuality in the military, and he was attacked from, from all angles. And all the man was doing, it was illegal at the time, all he was doing is stating a simple fact. It was against the law, de de determined to be incompatible with military service, to have active homosexuals serving in the military. Don't ask, don't tell was a subterfuge. It was illegal, period. And so that's when it began, and since then, although they will certainly rid themselves of any general or anybody else, and there's more than just those nine generals, there's up to 200 that I've heard of that have gone out because they disagreed with some of the things. The, the, great, the great problem with the homosexuals coming into the military was the blood, the blood issue. They can't give blood. Our soldiers are walking blood banks. You know, if you, if you spill a drop of blood in a basketball game because of Magic Johnson, they stop everything. Right, right. But they still expect our soldiers to take blood. Uh, you know, raise your hand if you would accept blood from an active homosexual. They may not even be able to deploy these, these people. So it's a ra I don't care what your views are on homosexuality. It's got nothing to do with putting them in the military and affecting the readiness of the military. We don't let fat people in the military either. And then they went to the women in the foxholes. I've commanded a battalion with women. Uh, I've seen firsthand how they perform in the field. They're outstanding in some ways in, in, uh, in terms of the readiness of a unit. I had a medical battalion uh, in open competition. They were first in many things. My driver was a female, and they had to compete for that. The honor guard was females, and they had to compete with that. But you can't put them in the field. You can't put them in a combat environment for an extended period of time, most of them. Uh, they can't stand to be dirty. We would have to rig up special uh, shower things, set out guards. You know, after a, couple, a man can go to the field for four or five days. He doesn't have to shower. He doesn't care. Very difficult to do that with a female uh, plus, they're not designed, I don't think, by nature to kill people. So, well, you, you brought up uh, you brought up uh, the such uh, I guess uh, uh, the points that I I had not considered. I never thought of the the blood issue um, uh, because I guess you know there's always I've always maintained there's always been gays in the military. Uh, it's just that you know it wasn't advertised. There was no right to or or or, or expression for where people could say I'm gay and be in the military. So I don't know I don't know how how the blood issue is is different. But uh, my my issue with that, with with the gays in the military, is humility. Um, um, you know, for the for the the men who are made to feel uncomfortable, who are straight, 
who are now showering and, and, and sleeping yeah. in close contact with uh, people who are making a point to say, I'm attracted to men. That's that. And again, so as someone who's never served, I would I that's the, what I thought the main issue was. And I've talked to people about that. And the response from, you know, uh, gay advocates and, and the response apparently from the military is if you're bothered by that, if you're uncomfortable by that, then leave. I mean, that's that's basically yeah. what the military is told the, 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 the straight soldiers who might feel naturally a little bit uh, uncomfortable comfortable well they're telling the soldiers that there's something wrong with him and they if if he is offended by by uh, someone leering at him or hitting on him a, a person of the same sex and if a soldier's in a club and he sees his commanding officer dancing with another man i mean give me a break well it's not even you know to me it's not even the uh it's not even here a question of hitting on or anything i don't know that that would happen uh, even if that doesn't happen to me it's just uh, you know, the, the, again, like the humility factor of a, uh, the same as if a man and a woman were showering together or, or sleeping in close quarters. Not that they're going to hit on each other or attack each other, but just, you know, knowing that they're attracted or, or at least one is attracted to the other. That, that was my case. And as far as the women in, in combat, uh, my problem is, as it's been with police forces and fire departments around this country uh, and extending it to the military where you lower uh, the uh, the requirements and you lower the uh, you know the, the the what they have to do to pass to to take those positions and uh, when you lower standards then you're you're going to suffer. You're going to lower your readiness. And by the way, don't dismiss the hitting thing because that's happened with lesbians, uh, with the WAC Corps in the past, and it's happening today in the military. So don't dismiss that. And the most important issue, uh, the health disparities with the homosexual communities and the blood. That they can't deploy a person who is not who can't give blood. Certainly, there's going to be cases they will. I think one university had to change its showers and stuff because uh, bisexuals and transgenders uh, were worried about their privacy, and it was costing them a lot of money to do that. Now you can imagine what if we had to do. And, and it's not just going to be homosexuals, gays, lesbian. It's going to be bisexuals and transgenders eventually. They have every right to serve if homosexuals have, if it's considered to be compatible with military service and it doesn't degrade our readiness. But it does degrade our readiness, and that's what the issue is. And so does females by lowering the standards for, for SEALs, for Rangers, for airborne troops. And the, and the chief of staff of the Army has said just that. He said if if we have difficulty integrating females into these positions, we will have to relook our standards. All right, General, I, I appreciate your time. Uh, uh, an honor speaking to a, a general, uh, anyone who puts the uniform on, but a, a general, a Medal of Honor winner. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's good being with you, Steve. All right, take care. That's uh, retired major, uh, uh, retired Army Major General uh, Patrick Brady, a uh, recipient of the U.S. Uh, military's highest uh, decoration, <clears throat> the Medal of Honor. And um, uh, the conversation, I thought the conversation would go a bit more towards uh, the purging of the generals and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, you know, the, the, the firing anyone who, who disagrees, not only the generals, as you said, about 200 other officers and what the ramifications would be uh, for our readiness and for the direction that uh, this administration uh, is taking our military and, and where, where uh, Barack Obama might might see uh, that direction uh, as and, and and what he might see as the role of our military i mean it's it's my opinion uh as a non-military expert it's my opinion that he has every uh desire to weaken us uh, not necessarily to put us at risk uh but to weaken us because why should we have the strongest and best and most well-equipped uh, you know military in the in the world it goes back to the philosophy of american exceptionalism you know hey he said everybody every country thinks they're exceptional you know, why Why are we so great? Why should we have when other countries don't? Why should we be, you know, the most powerful nation in the world? Why should we impose our will um, when we feel it's right? Uh, why should we be able to? So I'm, I'm worried about <clears throat> cutting down on brigades. I'm worried about, uh, I I'm worried about lowering standards. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure how the blood issue fits into any of this, to be honest with you. I, with you, I guess the, the general knows uh, more about that than I do. Um, but the lowering of standards and, and on, on the gay issue, uh, like I said, my, my only concern, I have no problem with anybody being gay. I just don't understand. Uh, and if you, you, you know, if you want to announce it in the military, if you feel the need to, to make it public in the military, I guess you're now allowed to. But again... I've, I've, I've interviewed many people. I've heard from many people, and it's common sense. Common sense. 
that if you're showering with somebody who you know could be attracted to you, if you're sleeping in close quarters with someone who you know could be attracted to you, there's a chance that as a straight male, you'll be uncomfortable. And when I've presented this to, you know, to, uh, to, to guests that are uh, heads of, uh, 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 you know, LGBT organizations or whatever, what I hear from them is, oh, you think the, the, the gay guy's going to attack people? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, listen to what I'm saying. Humility and uncomfortableness, just like there'd be humility and unco- a, a degree of uncomfortableness with a woman s- showering with the guys and, 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 um, and, and uh, sleeping with the guys. And that's why, guess what? Women don't shower with the guys and don't s- sleep in the same quarters with the guys. Why are women and men separated? Well, in that case, there's a mutual attraction or could be. But it, it goes one way, uh, could go one way, and it's a, and it, the, the straight guy doesn't know if the guy next to him is attracted to him or not, and it, it, it could make people uncomfortable. That doesn't mean you're, you're against gays. It doesn't mean you're homophobic. It doesn't mean you think you're going to be attacked. That's not what I'm saying, and that's not what I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the soldier might feel. Now, the soldier might feel all of that. I don't know what a particular soldier would feel, but I'm just going from the, the, the viewpoint of it's an uncomfortable situation. And what the militaries, instead of saying, we understand that, we understand it could be uncomfortable, uh, so here's the provisions we're making. Yeah. No, they say, well, if somebody's uncomfortable with showering with someone of the same sex who's openly uh, attracted to the same sex, too bad. Leave the military. That's basically what they've said. And I don't think that's the right way to go. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. All right. Uh, we have, uh, what, I'd love to hear from you folks, by the way. Love to hear from you folks. Uh, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629, 877-639-7629. Uh, tomorrow we will have Charles Krauthammer uh, once again on this show. Uh, I know we have uh, Senator Cornyn coming up uh, very soon, I think possibly uh, next week. And uh, i got to tell you, the, uh, the, the, the guests that we're having on this show, in addition to the regulars, uh, are just uh, uh, really top-notch, and I hope you're you're finding that as well. Uh, don't forget, if you have an iPhone, download the Newsmax app, the Newsmax TV app, Newsmax TV. You can watch this show, take it with you wherever you go. All right, so uh, you might want to do that. Uh, I would advise you to do that, certainly. When we come back, we have some more sound bites for you. Um, outrageous sound bites, you know, typical media bias sound bites. Uh, we will get to. I know you're going to want to hear them, so stay right where you are. We're even going to play. The bite from the Country Music Awards last night where they uh, mocked Obamacare because it was so good when I played it in the 3 o'clock hour or the first hour. I want to play it again in that third hour in case you missed it especially. And if you liked it the first time, you get to hear it again. All right, that's, that's pretty cool. All right, folks, so um, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629. Um, I'd love to hear from you, so give me a call. Otherwise, uh, we shall return and let you hear, well, I I don't want to tell you everybody we're going to hear from, but we're going to hear some bizarre things from uh, the usual suspects on the cable news stations and the uh, American Country Awards on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio.